Hello, nurses. This is Lucy Malenke from the University Writing Center. I'm the faculty member who serves as liaison to the nursing department and to the College of Health and Behavioral Studies. And in this brief presentation, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what kind of writing you can expect to do for the RN to BSN program. I'm also going to give you some strategies to help you succeed in those writing assignments. I'd like to start by asking you to think about why writing well is important for nurses and nursing students. You've already been working as a nurse, and chances are you wrote a cover letter and resume to get that job. Often, the first impression an employer has of you is through your writing. As an RN, you're well aware that written documentation ensures continuity of care for patients and helps protect nurses and their employers from litigation. Writing is a critical component of interprofessional collaboration. Nurses who are skilled writers can also use those skills to empathize, inform, and improve the quality of life for patients and their caregivers by creating handouts and other patient resources. And some nurses use writing to share their knowledge and expertise with broader audiences through writing research articles, editorials, or magazine articles. Some of the types of writing you'll do in this program will be familiar to you, and some will be new and challenging. I encourage you to see writing as a part of the learning process. The writing you'll do for this program will help you deepen your knowledge, add complexity to your opinions, and improve your ability to communicate with a variety of audiences. One thing to acknowledge is that not all writing tasks are equal. As a student, you'll engage in informal writing tasks, like taking notes on lectures and readings. And those tasks probably won't involve much planning or revision because you're the only one who sees them. You'll also do some semi-formal writing. These are tasks that you may not need to spend a lot of time on or that you may need to accomplish quickly, like emails or discussion boards or even clinic notes. But these things still need to be clear, concise, and professional because they're meant to communicate something to an outside audience and they represent your professional identity to that audience. Formal writing tasks, like research papers, literature reviews, or a nursing philosophy will be the most time consuming. The expectation for these kinds of writing is that they will be thoughtful, carefully crafted, and relatively free of errors. In my experience working with RN to BSN students, I know that writing for many is a big source of anxiety. You've already got a lot on your plate. Maybe you have trouble putting all of your ideas together. Maybe you've gotten some negative feedback in the past. Maybe you freeze. What I wanna do is give you some strategies for making the writing process less stressful, more efficient, and ultimately more enriching. When I take on a writing task, especially a formal writing task, I find it helpful to break it into four manageable phases, brainstorming, drafting, revising, and editing. The first phase is brainstorming. Though you may be tempted to dive in as soon as you get an assignment, you can actually save time and frustration by stopping to think about the task and making a plan of action. Whenever I have something to write, I begin with and constantly come back to this triangle of considerations, what I call the writing situation. Thinking about audience, purpose, and genre helps me decide what to write and whether what I'm writing is actually working. Let's think about each of these in a little more detail. When I consider my audience, I think about who I'm writing to. Now, for most of your classes, you're writing for your professor, but there's often a hypothetical audience you should have in mind. You might be writing to fellow nurses, a potential employer, or to the general public. Thinking about what your audience already knows and what needs your audience has will help you decide what to exclude and include in your paper. Once I've drafted a paper, I like to go back and pretend I'm part of that audience. Sometimes I have a friend help me with this. And I really think about what questions my audience might have about what I've written and how I can resolve those questions. Next, I consider purpose. If I've chosen a topic, I ask myself why it matters, what's at stake? And if I can't come up with a good answer to that question, I pick another topic. I also think about what outcome I'm hoping for. 
What do I want my audience to do with the information I convey? Apply it in their profession? Change their behavior? Agree with me? It also may be useful to consider why your professor is assigning this. What skills and knowledge are you supposed to demonstrate in your writing? What, if anything, are you supposed to learn? And how can you show that you've learned it? Finally, let's think about genre. This may not be a word you're used to hearing in reference to academic writing. But if you know how to get dressed in the morning, you have an inherent understanding of genre. The clothes you wear to work aren't the same clothes you wear on a date or to a wedding or to a funeral. Sure, there may be some overlap in your outfits, but there are different expectations for each situation that influence what you wear. It's the same with writing. Sometimes it's okay to write informally, using first person and your natural voice. Other times you're expected to write formally, using third person and technical language. In some kinds of assignments, you're supposed to share your personal opinions, while in others, you're supposed to remain unbiased. It's always helpful to consider what types of evidence are appropriate for an assignment. While it may be okay to refer to your personal experiences and observations in one assignment, another might only allow you to use scholarly sources. If you're writing an email, it will be formatted really differently than a research paper. As you probably know, APA style is the most commonly used citation style in nursing. Sometimes, at this point in the writing process, it makes sense to do some preliminary research. Maybe you need some background information on a topic you've been assigned. Or if you're having trouble choosing a topic, research can be a great way to come up with ideas. A good place to start is with the Research Guide for Nursing on the JMU Libraries website. You can see the Libraries module for more tips about research. At some point, you'll need to get your ideas down on paper. Some people who are visual or spatial thinkers like to use clustering. Or maybe you're a list person. Or maybe you just need to free write your thoughts. I recommend doing this kind of brainstorming before you draft so that it feels completely pressure free. Now, whenever I'm working on a big writing project, I find it helpful to take the ideas I've jotted down and to organize them into an outline. Having an outline will keep you on track and it's a good way to avoid writer's block. It also might be a good idea to show your professor your outline or to make an appointment with the writing center just to make sure you're on the right track. At this point in time, you'll have generated enough material to begin the drafting process. And that drafting process is going to be so much easier because of the time you've put in on the front end. Before you begin drafting, I suggest reviewing the assignment sheet just to make sure you haven't missed anything important. And know that you don't have to start at the beginning or end at the end. Oftentimes the introduction is the last thing I write. If you're a perfectionist like me, you may get bogged down in trying to get every word or sentence right. Try to avoid wasting time this way by remembering that this is just a draft. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. And if you have a bright idea in the middle of drafting, or you realize something you thought was brilliant actually isn't going to work, make that change. You don't have to rigidly adhere to your outline. Now it's time to revise. Talk to any of your professors about revision, and you'll probably learn that this is where they spend most of their time in the writing process. Revision is where problem solving happens. It's where you deepen and clarify your ideas. It's what takes an okay paper to a stellar one. Plan on spending about three times as long on revising as on drafting. I also recommend taking some time off between drafting your essay and revising it, if possible. That way you can approach it with fresh eyes. So in the Writing Center, when we talk about problems that can happen in papers, we generally put them in one of two categories. Higher order concerns are those big picture issues that need to be resolved before a paper can work. When you're revising, start by thinking about those issues, like organization. Think about whether your paragraphs are in the right order. Think about the balance of ideas in the paper. Ask yourself if there's anything you can cut. Also, consider your audience. Return to those concerns you thought about in the brainstorming process. Consider whether all of your claims are supported by reliable evidence and whether you integrated that evidence in a responsible way, citing every time you paraphrased 
quoted or summarized an outside idea. Finally, be sure to review the requirements of the assignment. Make sure that you did everything you were supposed to and that you have all of the required components, like an abstract and reference list. Once you're satisfied with the organization and content of your paper, it's time to clean it up. That's what the final phase, editing, is for. And here's where you focus on later order concerns. Those important details like clarity, concision, grammar, style, and formatting. They're called later order concerns and not lower order concerns because they're just as important as the higher order problems, but they need to be addressed later in the writing process. Think about it this way. It's a waste of time to tweak wording and fix grammar errors in a paragraph that ultimately needs to be cut. When you're working on later order concerns, I recommend doing a read-through in which you focus on language, word choice, and sentence structure. Then do a read-through in which you cut unnecessary words and condense long and confusing sentences. Then do a read-through for grammar and punctuation. And finally, check to make sure you're following APA style guidelines. Before turning your paper in, read it out loud or have someone read it to you. The ear catches problems that your eyes won't, especially if you've been staring at a paper for a long time. You'll see spelling errors and redundancies, and you'll hear confusing wording in clunky sentences. At this point in the process, it would be nice to get another set of eyes on your paper, your professor, a classmate, or a writing center consultant. For free help with your writing, visit the Writing Center website at www.jmu.edu slash uwc. You can also contact me, Lucy Malenke, your Writing Center liaison. I wish you luck as you begin this journey of earning your BSN. And remember, keep calm and write on.